There is a big story unfolding continually day after day, but most of the world doesn't hear about it. The Gulf of Mexico is dead and or dying. Dr. Rodney Soto is testing, diagnosing, and treating patients for toxic exposure. He's reported that he is seeing more and more and more people with toxins in their bodies and what will be obviously long-term health suffering associated with having been poisoned, not exposed, poisoned. This is an issue that is not going to go away. It's only going to get worse. This is a a tragedy of truly monumental proportions, is it not? It is a a very uh, large tragedy, as you say, because... The media, of course, is not covering, and now we have to deal with the consequences that most of the public is unaware of, and we're still yet to see what are going to be the future unfolds of the Mm -hmm. health issues in our community. When people come to you, are you beginning to see a syndrome that you say, ah, this person is clearly suffering from some kind of exposure? I, I mean, is it that obvious to you, doctor? There is no question that the most obvious that what we're seeing is what is being described in the medical literature from uh, respiratory symptoms to headaches and uh, flu-like symptoms, flesh pneumonia. Those are very common. They're relatively easy to diagnose, mm-hmm. skin problems, reactions of that sort. The most concerning issue will be of cases in which there's the acute toxic reaction but rather have overcome, in a way, the initial uh, insult or toxic load and are harboring all these toxins in their body without any symptoms. In Mm -hmm. other words, the lack Mm -hmm. of symptoms does not mean that they don't have any issues. And there will be, I guess we could say, plausible deniability on the part of BP because they'll say, well, that was five, ten years ago. You can't tie that to to the oil disaster. Absolutely. There is no uh, a historical connection to the oil spill in, in years to come. Right. And how can somebody prove that that resulted into a particular cancer? That's what is important nowadays, that people who have not even had symptoms to get tested and to be aware of things like this can affect their long-term health. When you have upper respiratory issues, sinus, all the way bronchial, down into the lungs, that is not viral, not bacterial, but being caused by toxicity, poison. You can't prescribe an antibiotic for that except as a a backup to hope and prevent secondary bacterial infections. What do you do as a doctor when someone is testing 95th percentile for this toxin or that toxin and and you know it's at the root cause of their problems. What what can you, you can't go to a pharmacy to to cure that easily. When we're faced with acute intoxication, we have to uh, accommodate or improve the body's efficiency to eliminate this pollutant. Fortunately, the body has some abilities to do that in, in a certain degree from the liver, uh, gastrointestinal system, the Mm -hmm. kidney, the skin, and the interventions that are aimed towards enhancing these abilities are through nutritional enhancement, through uh, limitation of toxic overload in a way to unload the liver from overworking, and the body can um, slowly and gradually accelerate the excretion of this pollutant. Hydration is very important as well in elimination mm-hmm. of other chemicals that some many Americans eat through their nutrition as well. The average American diet, as you, as you probably well know, results in the immune system actually attacking much of the components and toxins in the food people eat in order to sustain their immune system in the first place. Yeah, so that's, very, that's very <laughs> right because uh, and that's the reason why I think the oil spill is going to be of tremendous uh, harm to individuals down here is that they're already depressed or impairing the immune system from these uh, toxins from the nutrition. Right. Adding more to that will compromise significantly the total function of the system and, and cancer is going to surge. Approximately, doctor, how many different toxins are you keying on here? There are, in the testing that we perform here, we have found at least uh, five or seven the so-called volatile organic compounds mm-hmm. from benzene, 
ethylene, MP silene, mm -hmm. or other polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, they're called PAHs, to the polycarbonated compounds in heavy metals from mercury mm -hmm. to cadmium and uh, aluminum. These uh, components are also found in petroleum derivatives, even in, in certain amounts connected to the other. Hydrogen sulfide gas is another neurotoxic uh, potent agent. Mm -hmm. These are the combination of this. Naphthalene is another one. So we have a wide variety of these products that uh, we are testing here, and people are becoming positive that I think is strictly related to the contamination of the environment, even on individuals who have not been directly exposed in the cleanup uh, efforts or who are fishermen or who live by the coast. But right. Even inland, because the major dangers that we have now is that seafood is clear for consumption, which is um, very concerning because I, I, I don't think in my particular opinion that we should just let uh, people consume the seafood from the Gulf at all, and in, in, in a lot of the seafood, not, it's just not for this area, but for the entire country. It's criminal uh, to clear that uh, Gulf seafood production for human consumption. Absolutely criminal. The uh, the testing, honest testing done of everything that is is uh, harvested from the Gulf, has shown sooner or later, and usually sooner, levels of toxicity which are absolutely unfit for consumption. Now, this is a, another area of the complicit nature of the involvement of the so-called United States government and big international business like British Petroleum. Be right back in just a couple minutes.